All right, looking at the Darlene Gregg case study now. Scroll down and read question one. Greg made statements about the survey estimate method and the difference between two multi-factor models. Are these statements correct? Only one statement's correct, both are correct, or both are incorrect. Let's read until we get to those statements. Darlene Gregg, a junior analyst, was recently hired at NA Financial, a mid-sized Canadian investment firm. She is assisting her manager, Robert Mugo, in the management of a portfolio for high net worth clients. Over the years, Mugo has carved out a reputation for unparalleled work ethic and outstanding financial performance. He has been working at NA Financial for the last 10 years and earned a CFA charter within the last three years. He's been, an, he's been an active member ever since. Mugo has been analyzing several equity stocks for possible future purchases in line with the investment needs of a group of her clients. He asked Greg to help compute the required rate return for each stock. Before Greg gets down to work, Mugo wants to make sure that Greg has sound knowledge of basic equity valuation concepts. He invites Greg to his office to discuss the various approaches used to calculate required return. While discussing the various approaches used to estimate the risk premium, uh, Greg states that under the survey estimate method, um, so that is one of the statements we're looking at here, a survey is conducted for all equity investors. The data is, it is then used to come up with a reasonable risk premium. That's incorrect. It's not all equity investors. It's a survey. We can't possibly survey all equity investors. It's going to be a survey for um, people who are considered valuation experts. So statement one is not going to be correct. Then let's keep reading for statement two. Greg believes that he could also use multi-factor models such as Fama, French, and Pastor Stamba. Uh, model to calculate the required return. In response, Mugo stated that both of these models are based on one similar concept and that only the factors considered by each method differ. Greg nodded in agreement, stating that the Fama French model takes into consideration a liquidity premium. Um, so this is also going to be, it looks like this is the last statement. This is also going to be incorrect. The um, Fama French model does not take into consideration a liquidity premium. The Pastor Stam Stamba model does. Um, so we've got both statements incorrect. Um, only one is correct. Both are correct. C, both statements are incorrect. Question two, COPS required return based on the cap M is closest to. We left off here at liquidity premium. Let's start reading. To test Greg's knowledge on equity valuation, Mugo asked her to calculate the required return for COP based on cap M using a risk premium of 3.5% put forth in a well-known financial journal. According to Mugo, COP stock has, has a, had a historical sensitivity of 0.9%, or sorry, of 0.9, relative to the market, and treasury bills are currently earning 3.8%. Um, COP also pays a dividend of 2.03, and stock trades at 11.04. Those aren't relevant for what we need. We just need this risk premium, risk-free rate, sensitivity, um, and we can plug, let's see here, let me pull this down. So we'll be able to plug those three variables into our formula. There should be parentheses here on the beta and risk premium. We want to make sure we multiply those first, but we'll do 0.9 times 3.5, add in that 3.8 gives us B 6.95%. Question three, the forward looking, um, equity risk premium estimate using the dividend discount model method is closest to 10.03%, 20.6%, or 8.76%. Um, so we left off um, about here. I think we read the info we need for this, um, but let's read it again. COP also pays a dividend of 2.03 in the stock trades at 11.04. The company's dividend is expected to increase by 6%. So for the forward-looking um, equity risk premium using the dividend discount model, here's going to be our formula. Um, so we're going to have the dividend, expected dividend over um, the current stock price, so 2.03 um, over 11.04. And then we're going to add in earnings growth, which will be, or not earnings growth, uh, the, er, yeah, it is earnings growth, but the dividend rate typically, the dividend growth should grow 
concurrent with um, earnings. Um, so we'll add in that 6%, and then we're going to subtract out the risk-free rate, which brings us to 0 0.2058 or 20.6%. Answer B. Question 4. Based on Exhibit 1, the required return according to the FAMA French model is closest to... So we left off at expected dividend increase, and we've got exhibit one here. Let's uh, read. To come up with the required return based on these two models, and I think he's referring to Fama French and Pastor Samba, Greg gathered the following data. Exhibit one, um, so we've got the um, return, the market factor return, the small minus big return, so small cap um, premium, value premium and liquidity premium, and then also the risk-free rate. So as we kind of said before, um, the Fama French model does not include that liquidity premium. Um, so we will not include this in our answer. So basically we're gonna be adding this risk-free rate um, to our sensitivity to each of these premiums. So the market premium, 4.5%, we're gonna multiply that by our sensitivity to that at 1.2, 0.5 times 2.5, Minus 0.1 times 1.5, we'll add all those together and then add that to the risk-free rate to get our answer. So I've got the all those plugged in down here. Um, so we've got um, 3.8 risk-free, and then I'll put little parentheses around these so you can we can section them off. Um, but that's going to be those three things we kind of talked about up here, just kind of multiplying each of these together, adding up, gives us an answer of 10.3. Answer B.